Hello again everyone, uh, my name is Tim Collison. I've been working for the Leprosy Mission for the last three years and this is the fourth in a series of five devotional kind of thoughts where, where we think about what it means as Christians living in a time of crisis. And, and today's is thinking about what is our duty as children of the King. Uh, we've looked at what it means to be children of I am who I am, who is the God of comfort and who will strengthen us during this time. So you can go back and check out those videos, but this one today, we're really specifically thinking, what does it mean? What's our response as Christians during this time? And so the passages for today are Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 40, and Romans 15, 1 and 2. And you can pause the video here if you want to take some time to read those. And, you know, we've spoken before about how there's a long history of followers of Jesus caring for those who are sick during a time of plague. And today we're looking at how one Christian, a, a theologian named Martin Luther, encouraged Christians to respond during this time. So he was writing this around 1527, when a plague hit his hometown of Wittenberg. Now, Luther was a monk, which is where, at one point, which is where I'm wearing my nice warm hoodie, you know, do, do a bit of a monk-like thing. That's a bit of a joke for you. Um, but he used to be a monk, and, and some of you will know his story, but he wrote this response for Christians during this time. It was a letter to another, another Christian. And his first point was that as Christians, our response and our duty during a time of plague is to practice good hygiene and to take medicine if it's needed. Luther writes, use medicine. Avoid places where your presence is not needed in order not to become contaminated and thus perchance infect others, and so cause their death as a result of my negligence. So in effect, by obeying our government's current suggestions about good hand hygiene, about socially distancing, we're loving others. And the whole community, not just Christians, has been doing this. It's been really encouraging to see that. Uh, Luther particularly points out the use of medicine. He sees medicine as a gift from God, and it's something that can bring healing to us. So he encourages people to... to not see that as something separate from God, but to, to engage with that. So, take medicine if it's needed. Practice good hygiene. Avoid others. It's a really simple, practical response and duty that Christians can take up, along with, of course, others in the community. Luther makes a, a point as well in this that the enemy will seek to create fear and panic in our hearts during this time. Luther writes, he's such a bitter, knavish devil that he also takes delight in making us deathly afraid, worried and apprehensive. You can tell that he wrote this nearly 500 years ago. Of course it is not wrong to feel worried or afraid. That's not what Luther is saying. Um, we know Jesus was worried and afraid, so we know that it's okay and not sinful to feel those emotions. Luther is saying the enemy will try and create those and keep you in that place where you're worried. And, and the third point from this is that Luther actually suggests a way to deal with fear and worry that might be caused. He says, you know, you can say boldly, um, get away, you devil, with your terrors. Just because you hate it, I'll spite you by going the more quickly to help my sick neighbor. I know helping my neighbor is a deed well-pleasing to God. If you can terrorize, God can strengthen you. If you can kill, Christ can give life. Luther actually looks at helping our neighbor as helping Jesus, and he asks, if Jesus was sick, would you go and help him? And so, there's this really practical thing, as you reflect on this, that you can do, thinking about how you can help your neighbor. Now, psychologists in the 16th century weren't, wasn't a science as it is today, but psychologists will say that thinking about how you can help someone else, how you can bless someone else, is really good for your mental health. So by seeking to love your neighbor, that's actually a great way to reduce your fear and panic. And, and it's part of our duty as Christians. And, you know, you might not be able to go and talk to your neighbor. You might not even be able to go to talk to your family, depending on what state you're in. But you could write a letter. You could ring someone in your church. Maybe you could even go shopping for someone. And I know lots of people have been doing those practical things as an example of someone who lives in the kingdom of Jesus, which is so great. You could even think about one of the charities you support and how you could help them out in a time like this. As a leprosy mission, we know that many people affected by leprosy have been impacted by this crisis as they haven't been able to go to work. Some cases haven't been able to access treatment they need. 
So, you know, thinking about how you could support someone affected by leprosy during this time is a really practical way to live out your values as someone who follows Jesus Christ. Um, and, and another thing you can do if you'd like to reflect, you can read the whole thing that Martin Luther wrote. It's a bit old-fashioned, but it's still quite readable. He's an engaging writer, and you can see a link to that document in the description of this video. So thank you to everyone who's watching. I would be really interested to see in the comments below what you've been doing as a Christian during this time, and what your thoughts on responding as a Christian during this time are. So please comment on this, share this, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you have to say. And I'll close with a prayer borrowed from Luther. May Christ our Lord preserve us all in pure faith and fervent love, unspotted and pure until his day. Amen. Thanks so much everyone who's watched this. May God bless you all and have a lovely week. Bye.